Emergency. Batman speaking. Warning all of you to brace yourselves for big news. The biggest. Tell them, Robin. Holy surprises, Batman. It's really exciting. Soon, very soon, Batman and I will be batapulting right out of your TV sets and onto your theater screens. That's right, Robin. Our first full-length motion picture feature in color opens a whole new world of thrills. The big screen gives us more space on land, sea, and in the air to challenge the most bataclysmic collection of super criminals that ever plotted to take over the world. Number one, the Riddler. Question, who's going to make the feathers fly and knock Batman and Robin out of the sky? Number two, the Joker. Have you heard this one? It'll kill you, Batman. <laughs> Number three, the penguin. There are two eggs this wily bird is going to scramble. Batman and Robin. <laughs> Number four, the cat woman. Oh, you're going to see the perfect crime when I get Batman in my claws. <laughs> And that's just a sample of the exciting exploits ahead in our first feature motion picture. Holy memoranda, folks. Make a note not to miss it. Good thinking, Robin. Hi, everybody, and welcome once again to Geek Fest Rants. My name is Carlos Perone, and joining me here live in person, I have Steve Avona. Say hi, Steve. Hey, Carlos. Today we are going to be going a little bit backwards. I don't know if you want to call it vintage because the subject of retro. Batman. Yeah, retro. But see, the subject of Batman is so old that even what we're going to talk about today is not the original. original. Oh, no, no. This is probably the... It's a version. Is a version of Batman that people our age probably saw for the first time on television. Which was I don't know if the original films were ever shown. I know the you mean the serials. I mean I know the serials were probably at some point or another shown on television I in some so. shape or form. Yeah, and even you know some of that earlier stuff made it to television. But this is different because this is the first time we got to see something in color mm -hmm. and on a weekly basis and. Twice weekly. D disclaimer, we were not around when this aired. We're talking about syndication. We saw it in syndication. We're talking about the, what do you call it? The Adam West Batman? The television yeah, Batman? the Adam West Batman. Or the, you know, the TV, the 60s Batman, whatever you want to, however you want to term it. Everybody, I'm sure, knows immediately what we're talking about. Right. My exposure, again, probably like yours, was syndication. Yeah. And uh, I didn't have the background for it anyway in terms of, because I wasn't a comic book person, it wasn't like... Oh, wait, this is like the comic book that I used to... No, to me, it was just part of this syndication hole that I fell into in the 80s. I was like, ooh, this is weird. Oh, yeah. You know, and I think you would lump it in with any syndicated show. It doesn't have to be a genre syndicated show. I mean, like, when we were kids, we were watching The Brady Bunch and Gilligan's right, Island. Happy Days. And, happy and, Days and, 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 and Laverne and Shirley. And and Sanford and Son. Sanford and Son. <laughs> and anything that was on channels and, and, 5 or 11, 11 in yeah, New York, yeah. we were watching. And uh, Batman was heavily syndicated in the late well prior to us being born it was even syndicated but you know when we were coming of age i can remember watching it i believe it was on wnew which is now wnyw channel five as early as i can remember uh, you know I, i'm talking 76 77 you know i was watching it i you know and loving it now even though this is a older show from the 60s and we've seen syndicated shows from the 60s if you're thinking about brady bunch or stuff like that of that sure. kind of thing this wasn't you can't even compare it to the 60s in terms of brady bunch even though it was a sitcom it was a realistic oh, yeah. portrayal of what life was like more or less, right. I guess. Not if you look at Madman. <laughs> you right. can't compare Madman and Brady Bunch. But I think Batman what, is different. I think what you would call Batman is sort of a hyper stylized reality. We're talking about sixties pop culture, loud colors, and we're talking very heavily satirical. It was not taking itself seriously. It wasn't a comedy. It wasn't a drama. I mean, I would call it a satire. Yeah, because... And it spawned more of its type. Yeah, because it didn't... Exactly. I mean, the comic was a realistic portrayal, if you want to call it that, of Batman. It was never... The comic was never tongue-in-cheek well, or... That's or, sort of true. The comic went through various permutations. It started out as the grim, gritty vigilante that became popular again when we were like... Like, in, like a crime. Yeah. Uh, 
syndication yeah, uh, type when of When we deal. were in college, that was the Batman we knew was that sort of Dark Knight. Then that kind of lasted throughout the late 30s, early 40s, mid 40s. But then you had the introduction of Robin, which softened the character. And I mean, I'll just quickly go through it. Mm -hmm. Then in the 50s, when most of the superheroes went away and it was just Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman that really kind of carried through when all the other ones were gone, it became very sci-fi. I mean, Batman was meeting aliens and oh. underwater creatures, and it was very, very kid-friendly sci-fi. Uh, or not, if it wasn't sci-fi, it was just very sort of, yes, you had the Joker and the Penguin and, and the other villains, but it was But it's pre-60s. It's, it's pre-60s. Pre it's, it's harmless. Anti-establishment. Yeah. It, what, what, what you would say is that that's when the sort of the comics code came around. So that whole aspect of Batman had to go away because it had to be very, very family friendly, kid friendly, not violent, mm -hmm. no blood, nothing, any of that stuff. So that's the kind of route they went with not just Batman, but Superman and Wonder Woman. And it kind of carries into the 60s. You know, you have Batman joining the Justice League and these other characters come back from the 40s in different forms like the Flash and the Green Lantern and Hawkman. And again, it's not grim and gritty at all. And somewhere along the line, Batman intersects with 60s culture. You know what I'm saying? Like in the TV show is where Batman, because the show was envisioned as something similar to the Superman show with George Reeves, which was a little goofy, but it wasn't like wink, wink, <laughs> like Batman. It, it, Campy. Right. Superman, the Lone Ranger, stuff like that. The Batman TV series was envisioned as something like that. And it was going to be on Saturday mornings, you know, live action and probably shot in color because that's what they did with Superman towards the end of its run and Lone Ranger. Oh, wow. Because the realization was these shows would last longer in syndication with color. Color TVs were coming in. So they were shooting on film. So they just said, well... We'll shoot in color. When color TV comes around, it'll be much more appealing. Mm. So it's you more have sellable. Yeah, and th that's Margaret. what happened. I mean, and Superman, kids like color. <laughs> yeah, and Superman and the Lone Ranger were syndicated well into the seventies and even early eighties on channels. But even some shows that never made it to color, they still syndicated the crap out of them. Your Little Rascals. Your oh sure. Didn't some Gilligan's Island started out it in started black, black and, white and white and ended up in color? Yeah, and the Monsters. You know all that stuff. The Twilight Zone. Mm -hmm. But what ended up happening was CBS was negotiating to make the Batman series. And a funny thing happened. The Batman serials began to be shown in, of all places, the Playboy Clubs. Why? <laughs> Don't ask me. <laughs> but an executive from ABC, who was a fan of Batman, saw one of the serials and said, hey, we should do this. We should do Batman. So negotiations between CBS and I don't know if it was DC Comics or who, you know, but probably DC Comics stalled and ABC swooped in and got the rights to do the show again, still envisioning it as a serious show, but marketed for kids. Obviously what ended up happening was ABC farmed the series out to 20th Century Fox, who in turn farmed it out to William Dozier, who is what we would call today a showrunner. Mm. or executive producer, however you want to... He was the guy that got the job. He was not a Batman fan, comic book fan. Well, he did do his homework and start looking into the comics. And he saw his way in to this character. The only way he saw this working was as a satire. So it's William Dozier who came up with the idea that this was going to not take itself seriously. To twist it a little bit. Yeah. And by doing that... And I don't know if he realized this at the time or if this was in his plan. But by doing that, you're gaining two audiences. You're gaining all the kids who just think it's, you know, great comic books, mm -hmm. action, color, and there's morality lessons there. You know, it's all, you know, be good, do good, you know, that kind of stuff. You know, pay the meter and do all sorts of... <laughs> I mean, Batman, you know, he would tell Robin, put a quarter in the meter, you know, uh, you know, don't jaywalk. Or, I mean... And I guess you can't argue with that, but the adults could see that this was not taking itself seriously, that this was kind of a goof. And that's really the genesis of how 
the show became what it became. But let me ask you something. Adam West's performance, is it Adam West or is it how they wanted him to play? I think it's a combination. The only other show that you may sort of compare Batman to at the time is The Man from U.N.C.L.E., which in itself was something of a James Bond spoof. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not that familiar with The Man from U.N.C.L.E., but I know enough. And Adam West did a series of commercials, which I'm sure you can find. About, like, our man Flint. Well, Flint came after. Right, but I'm I'm saying comparing him, like, he was the, I don't want to say the poor man's James Bond, but he was the American not taking itself too serious James Bond. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, again, Flint was very mod, very 60s, very loud colors, all that stuff. A more serious version of Austin Bowers. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. So... Adam West started in the series of... I mean, he Adam West established himself as an actor in the late 50s. Very handsome, leading man type. And really nothing, if you see any of his early work, there's nothing to distinguish himself from any of these other actors of the time. Right. But apparently the Dozier and some other people saw him in a series of commercials where he played sort of a James Bond goof. And that attracted them to West. But he didn't have the job right off the bat. Now, you can see on YouTube, and there have been some documentaries about the uh, show already. He screen tested the other guy who was the primary contention for the role, and who I think could have also pulled it off, was an actor by the name of Lyle Wagner, who eventually played Steve Trevor on the Wonder Woman TV series. Oh, so yeah. He, so he found He's his another, way. another, like, square jaw. Square jawed, but also, like West, a guy who knew how not to take himself seriously. And if you look at the screen tests, Lyle Wagner, he screen tested with Peter Dayle, who... As what? As a Robin? As Robin. Okay. And I also believe that they combined, like they crisscrossed, like Adam West did with Peter Dayle, Lyle Wagner did with Burt Ward. Just to get the chemistry. Just to get the chemistry. Right, right, right. And so the chemistry ended up being Adam West and Burt Ward. And Burt Ward was a complete unknown, uh, whereas West had some cred lyle wagner had done stuff i don't know what peter dial may have done before if he did anything after i don't know but as i said these screen tests are all over the internet so i would highly recommend just people checking them out we'll throw some links there yeah so that was the combo they, they picked adam weston burt ward they decided on a format they decided on a this was also very important a cliffhanger format where they were originally going to do the show as an hour show every week right but what ended up happening was abc couldn't get a slot for an hour show so they decided to make it a half hour show twice a week but are they still shooting for saturday mornings or this is no by this point they're prime time okay i'm sorry i should have made that clear they're prime time and twice twice a week now this becomes very important later has that been done before offhand i would say no but you know somebody out there could call me on it that's weird I couldn't imagine that now. (laughs) But the important thing there is Batman only ran two and a half seasons, but they had over 120 episodes. Bang, syndication right away. Without the proper number of episodes, Batman may never have gone into syndication because there are other shows that copied the Batman once Batman took off. So it became a half hour show. Yeah. Technically. But, and with that famous, you know, cliffhanger ending where, you know, the narrator would say, you know... This, what will we do? You know, and it's same bat time, same bat channel. Who, by the way, that narrator was William Dozier. And the narrator of the show was the, the show producer. Wow. was William Dozier. And he had a great voice. An absolute great voice. Will he get there <laughs> yeah. in time? And, you know, I mean, so that kind of harkened back to the serials. And, you know, it was a way just to keep the kids excited and, you know, oh, gotta see... I want to say Batman was on a Tuesday and a Thursday night. And... To say that the show was a runaway hit is an understatement. I mean, it was gigantic. And originally, also, they were going to introduce the show with a movie. But what ended up happening was they rushed the show into production. Mm-hmm. And they decided to do the movie during the summer hiatus. Because there is the Batman movie. Yeah. And, and, and it came out in theaters, not on television. <laughs> that was a theatrical release. <laughs> And so during the long rerun period, you had a movie. I mean, this was, you know, when we think back, I have a feeling, even though I didn't live through it, that the phenomenon was something like the Tim Burton Batman, the lead up to the Tim Burton Batman. I mean, you remember that. I mean, it was insane. And 
Well, Batman just took over. Kids had nothing. I mean, they, they really didn't have anything like it. As cheesy as it looks today, they really had nothing like that. No. They hadn't seen anything like no. that. And it spawned something, you a topic that you're fond of, merchandising. Well, you could still see those toys at conventions and toy shows. You know, uh, there's the, there was a huge explosion of merchandising. and For a television for show. For a television show. And, you know, again, someone could call me out on this, but I don't think anything prior to Batman could match... The amount of, I mean, Superman was Lone merchandised, Ranger, Rogers. Lone Rangers, you know, yes, those were popular characters, uh, you know, I'm not counting this against Disney. No, uh, no, no, no. You know, a show spawning this kind of level of, I mean, there were Lost a lot of- Lost in Space? No, but Lost in Space was sort of after, uh, you know, uh, around the same time, maybe, you know- uh, No, I would only imagine, it has to be Western related. Yeah, you know, Daniel Boone and yeah. all that stuff. Uh, but maybe the Lone Ranger, I would say, but Batman still killed it. And that, in turn, sort of reignited the comic, the popularity of the comic. And the comic just immediately took its cue from the show mm. and just adopted that sort of zany, you know, format. And, Are you and, talking about the writing and the look? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. What's interesting is... Uh, I'm not sure what came first, but for the longest time, the bat symbol on his chest had no yellow oval around it. Now, I'm not sure like what came first, the chicken or the egg. If the Batman TV series, I think that the comic had the oval first and then the TV series followed it. But if you look at the auditions, there's no oval. <laughs> it's just a bat on his chest. But yeah, so I mean, it was a runaway, runaway hit. I mean, Adam West and Burt Ward were immediately catapulted to superstar status. And I mean, eventually that came back and bit them in the rear end. Well, how does this thing that is such a hit only last so short? You know, I think it's sort of the phenomenon swallowing itself. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It took off so quickly. And then I don't know if it was the twice weekly format or... Or if, you know, people just, it just got to be, it was very expensive. The show was very expensive. And I think that. It, I heard something I about the, uh, they had a, f maybe a $15,000 budget for the car, the Batmobile. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's entirely possible. I mean, it was like a, some kind of sportsy car looking thing that they tried, they had to completely. Uh, yeah. This uh, rated. <laughs> but I mean, it's so iconic, the, the car. I mean, but before we talk about the fizzling out. You have to understand how other shows, or other networks, other creative people sought to emulate the success of Batman. Now, Dozier himself, he created the Green Hornet, which only lasted a season. And I always found it a little strange that he decided to play straight. If you've ever seen an episode of the Green After Hornet. After Batman? Yeah. I mean, the Green Hornet is considered a spinoff of Batman, and actually there was a crossover episode <laughs> where the Green Hornet showed up, and Van Williams was the Green Hornet, Bruce Lee was Kato. And right. the Green Hornet, I've seen all the episodes, and I think it's pretty good. You know, I was okay with it being straight, but apparently, you know, that's not how people envision their heroes. Once Bruce Batman, Lee in the 60s or the 70s? 60s. Was he anybody in the 60s? He was not quite anybody, no. He, he was, was big in the 70s. Well, he, when he went back to Hong Kong, he became gigantic. He was enormous. But wow. yeah, he was, you know, he was cast as Kato and, you know, he had the charisma and the moves and everything, but, you know. And the Green Hornet, anybody, you said the name of the... Van Williams. Any, anything else that we've seen him in? Not, uh, I, I don't know if he was ever on a show as a regular. He had a decent career, but nothing, you know. Now, this is a hour-long show or a half hour? Half hour. Twice a week? Once a week? Once a week. Oh, okay. So there. Yeah, there are only like 26 episodes of The Green Horn. It's never been syndicated. I mean, it, it might have... I think FX ran it a couple of times. It's like Batman, you know, bootleggers have, you know, really, you know, gone mm -hmm. crazy with it. So that was the first spinoff. But then there were these other shows that were not... You know, the Green Hornet was an, a pre-existing character, whereas these other shows, they just created these characters for television. One was called Mr. Terrific. Another was called Captain Nice. I mean, these, <laughs> show, these shows lasted these shows lasted a season. What? They've never been syndicated. I think Captain Nice. Colonel, I can't make up my mind. Uh, one of them. <laughs> One of them is on DVD in Europe somewhere. God. But not only those shows, but Dozier, not only did he have, you know, he got the Green Hornet on the air. But Dozier, I guess his mandate was, okay, you know, Batman's such a huge hit. Can you give us anything else? So he tried Dick Tracy. 
which went to pilot and it's on the internet, which you can very easily and see. Ha- didn't Dick Tracy also uh, have their own serials? And oh, yeah. Their own Dick Tracy. Way yeah. Before? Oh, sure. Oh, Dick um, Tracy is 1930s. Plenty of serials, plenty of movies, all low budget. And they used a lot. I mean, the, the lead villain in the pilot is Victor Buono, who was King Tut in the Batman series. <laughs> but that didn't air. Then they even tried like a mini pilot. I don't know what they would call it, like a test reel or whatever of Wonder Woman. And that is, again, on YouTube. And it's the most atrocious thing I've ever seen in my life. And it's only like seven minutes. Again, both played as spoofs. Now, one thing that is important to mention about the show is that it was so popular that all the major stars of the day and even you know prior years wanted to either play villains or make cameos <laughs> so they had a sort of a anybody who knows the batman show knows that a lot of times they would climb up a building and then some uh. <laughs> sammy davis jr or somebody would come what out what are you doing here one time they even had lurch from the adams family come out and you know you know they would shoot it like you know they were climbing uh. up the building and tilt the camera the whole night so that was one thing. Now, the villains, you had very, very popular character actors like Cesar Romero, Burgess Meredith, Frank Gorshin, who was also a comedian, John Astin, uh, Julie Newmar. Uh, I mean, all these uh, Otto Preminger, Eli Wallach, <laughs> you know, wanting lining up to play villains. Cliff Robertson, Joan Collins, Milton Burl. I mean, they used a lot of the villains from the comic, but they created their own just, you know, to... To give actors just to get actors to, something to, to big do big names big names and uh i mean i'm sure that there was a, a list a mile long of actors who didn't make it onto the show but you had i mean you had the primary guys you know cesar romero is the joker burgess meredith is the penguin frank gorshin is the riddler julie newmar is catwoman in the movie was lee merriweather and also eartha kitt played catwoman and eli wallach and otto preminger and george sanders all played mr freeze so you had actors who would never do television wanting to be on Batman. Vincent Price is Egghead. Well, he did a lot of television, but I'm just saying, like, actors of a certain pedigree. And that's nothing new. On one hand, it's nothing new that, you know, some people want to get in the show to, to do their spot. But it also works in reverse. Like, a lot of times, the network of whatever show you happen to be on, they want to promote their stars. And this is something I remember used to happen all the time in the 70s. Mm-hmm. Buck Rogers would have... Jack Palance would show up and right. this person would show up and that person would show up and Battlestar Galactica yeah have, it's like you know. and it's weird because a lot of times when you do that it kind of deflates the show a little because if you're used to a certain level of reality and mm-hmm. I know this show isn't about reality no. but all of a sudden this famous person shows up and you're like oh okay I get it it's yeah. like but we're yeah. doing a little cross promotion here right right it's, yeah. all of a sudden it's the battle of the network stars <laughs> now as you pointed out uh, Batman fell as quickly as it ascended. And one of the signs that Batman was faltering was the introduction of Batgirl, Yvonne Craig. They thought, you know, that would liven things up a bit. They shot a test reel, which never aired, but is also on YouTube. I guess we'll provide links for all this stuff. And she was a fairly popular character, but the show at this point is losing steam. And she shows up in the last season, but she can't save it and the show was canceled. Now, what's kind of sad is NBC. Now, hold on. Let me oh, stop before you say Sure. Because I'm getting a little confused here. So you said the show lasted like two, two and a half seasons? Yeah. And it, it got to the, the 100 mark. 120. So how many episodes per season are we talking about here? Because, what, like 50 well, episodes? I don't know. 60 you, episodes? Well, divide three That's by insane. 120. What's that, 40? That's 40, an incredible 80? amount of episodes. Yeah. Well, I mean, don't forget, as an example, Star Trek, which was an hour long. Yeah. They had... I think the first season was 30 episodes. Wow. See, I'm so used to I think now- the seasons were longer. The, the, the hiatus yeah. was shorter. The series, the running times were longer. You know, Star Trek was 51 minutes. Now a show is 42. But I mean, they were grueling, grueling seasons. Yeah, I was going to say, because nowadays, you know, we're, we're, we're almost starting to see the decline of the 20, 22 of the 22. <laughs> Episode, episode season, season yeah and now we're kind of starting to get used to the 13 episode seasons yeah. and it's like wow no wonder <laughs> they had so many episodes it, yeah two and a half years it was probably the equivalent of maybe three or four years yeah. for nowadays right 
But that was the saving grace for the show was the fact that it, it could be and with Star Trek they bank so many they bank so many in such a short span of time that the you know you guaranteed the show immortality. Gilligan's Island's the same thing. It was only on for three years, <laughs> but, but it felt like uh, well, six or seven. Yeah. So the show was canceled, and NBC is willing to pick it up. But NBC says, okay, you know. So from ABC to NBC. To NBC. Yeah. Okay. But the sets were demolished. Ugh. And that was it. NBC wasn't going to rebuild. I mean, the sets, the Batman sets were quite something. So NBC was like, no, the hell with it. You know, we're not, we're not doing it. So that was it. And I mean, I would have just died if I were <laughs> Adam West. Or part one. Because you haven't seen, I mean, even we talk about the actors in Star Trek and, and what their careers were like after this show ended. The hit that Adam West and Burt Ward took after the cancellation of Batman. You're talking about financial, personal? Career. Uh, career wise. Career wise. Okay. But again, from what? They were almost unknowns before. They were superstars while they were in the show. So but you they know what? Kind of I mean, went back to what they were. Well, I mean, Adam West, he couldn't get work for love or money, and neither could Burt Ward. I mean, what these guys were reduced to throughout the 70s and even the 80s and even the early 90s. <laughs> They would do personal appearances all over the country in costume. Ooh. I think that I saw them as a kid. I have pictures of meeting Batman and Robin. You're Everybody, not sure if it was a dream or it was no, real. I have to, there are pictures, but I'm not sure if it was Weston Ward. But, and my parents don't remember, but, I mean, we're talking malls, car dealerships, Knights of Columbus. Ouch. I mean, we're talking like the lowest low. Birthday you know, parties. And you're talking was... about like you're looking, you know, you see now on the Internet, you know, people posting pictures of themselves with West and Ward in like the 70s, the late 70s, the 80s. And they're not looking so good in those outfits. Yeah. And it's, you know, that's how they had to sustain themselves. I mean, they got jobs. But here and there. And it was m very. Probably the, voice work. Well, well. Adam West, Adam West. Uh, he, he did Simpsons. Well, that's later. That's much later because like Shatner, Adam West became this pop culture icon, but he suffered much more than Shatner did. And he actually ended up voicing Batman and a lot of the animated stuff in the late seventies, <laughs> you know, Batman and Cartoons, super friends. And yeah, it was a lot of it was West, you know, they really, they suffered greatly. And, and there was no like revenue sharing or anything. They I don't were, know what, their deal was with Fox or, you know, the if, thing about syndication is yeah. you get those syndication checks. Well, yeah, but I don't know. Again, but 1960s. I, I, I don't know if they had that in place. Pennies on a dollar. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I have, that's a good point. Yeah. So the last time that you ever see Adam West and Burt Ward play Batman and Robin together on screen. And you know, this is mm. legends of the superheroes. Mm. <laughs> now, you have to remember, and I, oh. I now before YouTube and, and, and the that internet from my mind and all that and stuff, now you bring it's it back. now available on commercial DVD. But I remember seeing this thing. Now you have to remember, I'm watching the <laughs> Batman TV series as a kid, loving it. You know, a little kid. All you know is it's Batman and he's fighting and he's punching and you have the dolls and you're fighting and punching too. And Amigo. it's it's all wonderful, <laughs> Mego dolls. And then this thing comes on this late '70s variety special filled with superheroes but you have no lag this is happening this more is, or less at the same time this is happening at the same time you're discovering Batman and you're watching and this I'm at the like, same time and I'm like oh my god <laughs> and not only is it Batman and Robin but it's all the other heroes it can't get any better than and this no I, I almost had a stroke it's the same feeling <laughs> it's the same feeling that you had when the Star Wars holiday What's special next, was on What's next the Avengers? yeah <laughs> yeah 30 years later <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I would liken that feeling to the Star Wars holiday special. You're seven years old, eight years old. Yeah, it's it's. We know it's horrible, but you're like, you're a kid. Thank God I never saw it <laughs> live. Live, I did. I saw both live. I saw both live, and I had no way to tape it. But thankfully, people with the Betamaxes and whatever, because then as I got older, and the Whammajamas, and I had these vague, vague memories of seeing Is these things, and there's no internet you? yet, and there's no YouTube, you can't and, confirm I, anything. and I can, I'm like, well, did I really, did I not? And when I started going to conventions in the late 80s and early Ooh. 90s, <laughs> the guys had the bootlegs, and they had the monitors on the things, and there they were, and I'm like, here's my money, you know, here's my money, you know. <laughs> That's my childhood memories, give me, give me, give me. Give me, give me. <laughs> give me my childhood. I'm paying for my childhood. I have proof that I have. I know it's real. And then, of course, you watch it and you're like, oh, my God. And you were there? And you were there? Uh, yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> it wasn't a dream. But, you know, and yes, they were horrible and awful and cheesy and not funny. And, you know, <laughs> but I will say this. And you can, from Warner Archives, you can get the Legends of the Superheroes DVD. But I will say this. Adam West, he hadn't lost a step in terms of how he played Batman <laughs> and Burt Ward. And they also had Frank Gorshin as the Riddler, you know, playing the, I mean, you Was know. Is that the one with Ghetto Man? Yes. <laughs> there were two. <laughs> the challenge and the roast. And Ghetto Man was in the roast. <laughs> Which is, and oh. I was so, I felt like such a big man when I was able to show all you guys the, 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 the uh, and tapes. And the look of horror. Like, what is happening uh, yeah. right now? Is Steve locking I'm the scared. door? Why is he locking the door? Oh, no, he's closing oh, the window shades. I'm afraid. Yeah. <laughs> so here we are. Now we're at a point now where now the internet's coming. The internet's coming and the Batman movie comes out. And, you know, I have to say, I feel a little bad because... I sort of turned my back on the Adam West Batman when, when the Tim Burton movie came out and Batman had become this really serious dark vigilante. I was like, I spit on that. It's horrible. And, you know, how could I have ever liked it? I was a stupid kid. But is this pre Frank Miller? Well, this is like around the Frank Miller time. So the so Frank Miller is like 86. But I'm saying Tim Burton is 89. OK, so Burton also because I know that there was a big deal that the most current Batman mm -hmm. was very Frank Miller ish. But Burton tried to also do the Frank Miller route. Not to the extent that Christopher Nolan did, but yeah, it a was it was bit. dark. Okay. It was dark. But with that Tim Burton kind of wackiness. Until Schumacher. Uh, <laughs> then he killed it. <laughs> and, and actually, Joel Schumacher took his cue from the TV series. <laughs> Wow, that, yeah, you're, you're, you're kind of right. And he still, Mr. Freeze. Yeah, and he still screwed it up royally. And all the neon. And he the, he uh. still, still screwed it up. But now, finally, we're talking like 30 years later, Adam West and Burt Wood are sort of enjoying this newfound popular, more so Adam West, because he's coming into like this nostalgia. The people who watched him as a kid. Well, you know what? It's the dead president syndrome. They're probably the oldest Batman-related people yeah. alive. Right. But, you know, even the Tim Burton movie, which kind of, you know, kind of... I don't say it desecrates the original, the, the Adam West series, but it, it's like, no. It's it, different. It's very They different. didn't offer West a cameo. You know, he was kind of upset that that, you know... But... Billy Dee was Harvey Dent. Yeah. But it sort of helped the show kind of resurge. And then in the 90s... You know, again, they started doing, they were too old to do the personal appearances, but the conventions started. The revenue from the autographs started. The well, sort of, the love. The autograph. The, yeah, the, the love for them that. The nostalgia. The nostalgia. It really, you know, brought them back. And not, not to say that, I mean, Burt Ward's career just never, ever came back. And it's but, weird because it's not like a Trek resurgence because Trek had its two, two and a half years, but then it went away yeah. and it came back. Mm -hmm. These guys never came back. Right. They are living off yeah. that, that in-between period. Yeah. And, you know, Batman is a character that's had so many different sort of iterations. It's had so many different versions that, yeah, it was never going to come back that way. You know, but the appreciation for it, that's the important thing. The appreciation for it came back. And now in the meantime, this is all uh, in bootleg world. Oh, oh, well, yeah. Or, now, or your now, personal recordings of the right. syndicated yeah, shows. Yeah, we're talking uh, no release, uh, no legitimate release, because here's the problem. Warner Brothers owns the DC characters. 20th Century Fox owns the Batman television mm -hmm. series. So every old Superman, Shazam, whatever, Wonder Woman, if it comes out on video, DVD, whatever, it comes out from Warner Brothers. Fox... They had the sole distribution rights for the movie. So the movie has always been available. Yeah, yeah. And Adam West and Burt Ward did a commentary and they did interviews and all that stuff. But, you know, Laserdisc, DVD, nothing. So it's just two studios butting heads. Butting heads. That's it. For years. And to a point where it just totally missed DVD. Now, finally, it's coming out on Blu-ray. They seem to have put all their differences behind them. Season by season or a set? It's going to be a box set. Box set. And with all the bells and whistles. And, you know, everybody's thrilled that West is still alive. He's 85 years old. Wow. He was so, I mean, I have to give him credit. I mean, yeah, he was doing this to make a buck. But also, through his website, he put out a DVD of sort of like mini commentaries on all the shows. <laughs> 
just like, you know, in his house talking about them. So he, there was something for posterity. Ah. And I give him credit for that. I mean, yeah, like I said, he was trying to make a what buck. Kind of, what kind of idiot would do commentaries in their own home? Uh, ne- never mind. Sh- never, I don't want to talk about it. But, I mean, this was actually the guy on the show. I mean, but who are we? It's a little more cred there. <laughs> yeah, a little more street cred. So, and yes, they've been interviewed many times for different specials and documentaries. Unfortunately, nearly all the actors who played the villains have passed away. The yeah. great majority of them. But I think they're going to get all the surviving people together. You know, I should have mentioned this when we were really in the, in the meat of the uh, show while it was going on. But somebody else that deserves a mention is the chief writer on the show was a guy by the name of Lorenzo Semple Jr., who just recently passed away. And he was the one who sort of gave the show its voice, its sort of camp quality, mm-hmm. its, set, its satirical quality. And all the other writers who came on sort of emulated him. But he's like the main guy. And just as sort of a interesting trivia point, he's the screenwriter for Never Say Never Again with Sean Connery. <laughs> but he set the tone for the show. So, I mean, here we are almost 50 years later, 48 years later, the show is, you know, going to be on Blu-ray. And, it, you know, the show is still popular. I don't know. I know it was on TV Land for a while, but I think it's gone on to other networks, other nostalgia networks. Well, I guess after, uh, after DVD, it's going to probably hit Netflix or something like that, mm-hmm. some kind of streaming service. I would, uh, Yeah, I would totally imagine so. And, I mean, I'm thrilled because... As I said to you before, I had a sort of a, a period where I divorced myself from the show. Like, oh, I'm, I'm too good for that. And it was really silly because the show has its own virtues. Batman is a character who has had so many different sort of incarnations. And they're all valid. They're all okay. You know, the, he could be the grim dark vigilante. He could be the sci-fi kitty hero. He can be the 60s you know, Batusi, you know, <laughs> joking around and, you know, moralistic, you know, winking at the audience. Hey, daddy Oh, what's going on? Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, and he can, you know, be the Tim Burton or the, the only one I don't like is the Schumacher. I mean, Schumacher, he really, he killed it. He Everybody just, chill. Yeah. <laughs> the less said about Joel Schumacher, the better. You know, there have been so many different animated versions of Batman and there was very recently... They did one called Brave and the Bold. Batman the Animated Series was the one I really loved. But more recently, within like the last five, six, seven years, they did one called Brave and the Bold, which was completely the Adam West show in terms of tone. And I, I loved it. You know, it was, it was one where he would team up with other DC heroes. And I don't know. I mean, it lasted maybe two, three seasons. I don't know what an animated season is, but it's also on DVD. Uh, you know, I just love it. And I'm so thrilled that it's finally coming out. And I think it has an important place in the history of the character. And for many years, you know, right after the show went off the air, DC went to the sort of dark, gritty 70s Batman that sort of leads into the Dark Knight, the Frank Miller, all that stuff. But, you know, it's okay to like Adam West. Plus, it kind of keeps it alive. It keeps it relevant. That's the main thing. Whether you like it or not, at least it doesn't just disappear into nothingness. Right. He carried Batman through the 60s. You know, that version of Batman was enormously popular. Plus, no matter how old you are or what generation you're of, if you want to have an introductory lesson in Batman to little kids, yeah. you're not going to show them the Dark Knight. No. No, you, you can show them this and feel comfortable that, you know, yeah. you're not going to get anything weird. They're not going to get any, mm-hmm. you know, so they're not going to get scared. Right. But at least it's a little taste of what Batman and, is. And, you know, as I said to you before, they're little morality tales. So, like you said, if you're a parent, this is great. I mean, yeah, there's punching and stuff, but they're going to... Kapow. Lo- they, kapow. kapow the, <laughs> yeah, we know the, the uh, you see the, the sound effects. <laughs> but the kids are going to get a good lesson. And uh, that's harmless, you know, to, okay, be good, stay in school, all that crap. So I, I can assume you are, you already have it pre-ordered? and Well, when it's available for pre-order. You know, of all things, they allowed Conan O'Brien to make the announcement that this was coming out. He made the announcement. Apparently, he's a He huge, must be a big fan. Must be a big fan. And he said, you know, I'm so excited. I'm happy to announce that Batman's coming out. And then once he said it was happening, Adam West and Burt Ward were able to confirm it. And, you know, it's... Well, it's on its way. Like you said, just the amount of extras they could squeeze into this might be even better than the fact that you get those 
episodes because there's probably so many stories they could tell you that yep. they've, you know, I'm sure some of them have been told already a million times in conventions and this or that, mm-hmm. but not just those two, but I'm sure there's got to be some leftover yeah. production people that can tell you about the history of the bat cave and the history right. of the of how they build the car and yada yada yada. And you know what I'm sure the toys. I mean, they merchandise the crap out of it, like you said before. And that stuff is worth bundles nowadays. If you're into toy collecting, that '60s stuff is gold. And that's a documentary right there. The that's all, yeah, that's a whole disc yeah. right there. <laughs> and you know what? If you want to get, they put the other actors on film so many times that they can use vintage interviews mm-hmm. for them, and you know it'll be just as good. It'll be a place where you can pull it all together. You know, if they don't do commentaries for each episode, they should grab those, the ones that Adam West made, and just yeah. slap them on there. Yeah, I mean... At least get his track in it. Give him a few extra bucks, he'll be happy. Oh, God, the guy is... Talk about a money grubber. I mean, if he was selling them out of his van or something. <laughs> you know, as much as I love Adam West... Why don't you tell us a story you might have told us already in the past about your okay. your experience of okay. getting his autograph? Uh, my experience of getting now I've I've gotten Adam West's autograph. I'm sorry through his website. I've ordered it, and he has a selection of photos and reasonably priced. And I think I've ordered maybe three times. I got auto, his autograph before I actually met him. Now I met him probably close to ten years ago, and thankfully, you know, with the internet and message boards and all that kind of stuff you can sort of prepare yourself for the experience because when you meet your heroes it can sometimes be very disappointing (laughs) so the more information you have the better so i met adam west and burt ward and lee merriweather at the same chiller convention in new jersey and i mean his prices weren't bad for the time but i wanted to take a picture with him and he has this assistant who is just it's good cop, bad cop. The assistant is there basically to tell people, no, yeah, no. And Adam's like, oh, but the person wants to do it. No, Adam, they're taking advantage of you. Oh, but I want to do it. Well, if you want to do it for an extra 10 bucks, you can do it. Blah, 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 blah. And so this guy. It's an now, act. now, Adam West, he's a quirky guy. He's nicer in person than Shatner is, but he's all about the money. And yet I knew that. So as much as I want autographs, I want pictures, too. I think I am the creator of the photo op because at that time, you know, yeah, yo, take a picture. Yeah. You know, as long as you would get the autograph, they would right. not a have a bonus. problem. A little bonus. But this guy was like, no, 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 no. Uh, Adam's not taking pictures. And Adam was like, he was sitting there doodling on his paper on the table. And, you know, people were, you know, talking to him. And he was nice and pleasant enough. And he had sunglasses on and whatever. And I got his autograph. And I was like, I really want a picture. Because I had one with Burt Ward and I had one with Lee Merriweather. And I went, circled back over to the guy. And I said, listen, 20 bucks to take a picture with Adam. He looked at me. He's like, done. He's like, Adam, take a picture with this nice guy. Yes, sir. <laughs> and Adam was like, you know. Did he, he take off his glasses? He, no, he did not take oh, off his glasses. Oh, okay. Hey, you still you should have given him an extra five. Well, maybe an extra <laughs> ten. Now a photo op is like 100 bucks. Some of so, them charge, yeah. So, but but he Don't said, get me to Ad, I said he he you know gave him the twenty bucks. I have my nice picture with Adam that I can post when he dies, and uh, <laughs> you, know, death watch. I'm on, you know, you know, eighty five years old. You never know. So yeah, so that was my. I mean, again, I I wasn't like I you know wasn't there to have a whole conversation with him because there was a line of people behind me, but he just looked up, smiled, and there's my little moment, <laughs> and made me happy. You know, and and in the process, you're bankrupting kids all over the world. I, I am. <laughs> hey, I only spent twenty, and I never spent more than forty for his autograph. Nowadays, there are shows where he is charged a hundred bucks. Well, that's when autograph. they do those private photographs, those portrait type yeah. of deals, where you go behind the curtain and you. I did a lot of those with Creation, but again, I sort of got out just in time. This is a whole other <laughs> stuff, you know. But just to say, you know, with the photo ops and the autographs. I mean, I still get autographs from shows through other people who go, uh, you know, that I know through the internet. But uh, thankfully, I got a lot of my pictures with people when they were either free or really cheap. Uh, Now it's ridiculous. But I'm sure he also signs, uh, I mentioned earlier, Simpson stuff. He's got some Simpson stuff. You go to his table, it's, it's primarily Batman, but there's enough Mayor West family guy pictures there yeah, and, that's yeah. right that's right cool well i'd like to thank steve for obviously joining us today and giving us all this great information on i mean if you thought the television batman was just a 
dinky little show on the side of <laughs> television history. No, this this no. Is, this thing has legs, and it finally, like I said before, the opportunity for people to be able to see this at home without having to, you know, loop it through a blurry VHS uh, <laughs> eighth generation <laughs> copy. Yep. You know, you're going to have a chance not only to most likely either buy the Blu-rays, rent them, Stream and like them. I said before, I'm sure that as soon as it hits, a couple of months later, you'll be able to stream them at home and your kids can catch up with all this stuff. So on behalf of Steve and myself, I'd like to thank you guys for joining us, and we'll see you here next time at GeekFest Rants. Bye-bye, everybody. To the Batmobile. Just in time. <laughs> 120 episodes. What? Is it possible? Not only possible, but true. Fully remastered in HD. Holy skyrocket! Exploding with all new special features. A special extra bonus. Batman, the complete TV series. On Blu-ray, DVD, and digital HD. November 2014. You've done it again, Batman. As my childhood memories, give me, give me, give, give, me, me, give, me, give <laughs> me my childhood. I'm paying for my childhood. I have proof that I, I am real. I know it's real. Is Steve locking the door? Why is he locking I'm the door? Scared. Oh, no, he's oh, closing the window shades, I'm afraid. Yeah. You know something, Batman? What's that, Robin? She looks very pretty when she's asleep. I thought you might eventually notice that. That single statement indicates to me the first oncoming thrust of manhood, old chum.